Do we really have 10 times more bacterial cells in our body than human cells? Well, newer research suggests that this may not be actually true. But there are still at least 1.3 bacterial cells in our body for every human cell and most of it is in our gut. What do you think are they doing there? Definitely, they're not sitting idle. In fact, they're quite busy. Right now, they could be making you or breaking you and what they are doing could actually depend on what you are doing for them. We will see what these gut bacteria are doing in our body and how you can get them to make rather than break your health. But before that, how exactly did these bacteria get inside you? Probably you guess it right. It comes even before birth from the amniotic fluid in the uterus of the mother and after birth, these microorganisms start colonizing the gut. Microorganisms in the mother's birth canal also get in and colonize the baby's gut. This is why the babies born of C-section have different gut bacteria compared to the normal birth babies. Not all bacteria that have colonized the gut are good for you. Some bacteria have no particular effect in the body and some may even be harmful. Breast milk provides immunity against the harmful bacteria and also provides nutrients and promote the growth of good bacteria. Breast milk plays an important role in promoting a healthy bacterial population in the gut, which is one more reason why breastfeeding is really important. As the child grows and have different foods, different nutrients and bacteria are introduced into the gut. And by around three years of age, the gut bacteria resembles that of an adult. So now we know how it got there. But what do they do inside your body? How do they help? The links and references in this video are given in the description. Our body doesn't have the enzymes to digest starch and many other complex sugars. So the good bacteria does the job for us and release vitamin B and K into the intestines for us to absorb. Gut bacteria also benefit the host in a variety of ways such as regulating gut motility, transforming bile acids and steroids, metabolizing synobiotic substances, absorbing minerals and activating and destroying toxins, genotoxins and mutagens. Dysbiosis or having the wrong bacteria in the gut is seen to be associated with intestinal symptoms such as bloating, abdominal pain and diarrhea. Gut bacteria have a direct link with the risk of many diseases and afford protection against cardiovascular diseases, hyperlipidemia, breast cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer, osteoporosis and menopausal syndrome. Multiple studies, both published literature and ongoing research suggest that a well balanced microbiome can specifically prevent certain gastrointestinal based cancers including oral and colorectal cancers. Disorder in the native intestinal bacterial community, which means bad bacteria, also contribute to the development of prostate cancer. The composition of the gut bacteria in healthy individuals is seen to be different from that of colon cancer patients. Gut bacteria is an important determinant of susceptibility to obesity and related metabolic diseases. The occurrence of diabetes type 1 and 2 is impacted by early intestinal microbial colonization at birth, which is affected affected by the feeding methods, birth weight and the delivery method at birth. The brain and the gastrointestinal system are intimately connected. Strong evidence suggests that gut microbiota has an important role in two-way interactions between the gut and the nervous system. It interacts with central nervous system by regulating brain chemistry and influencing neuroendocrine systems associated with stress response, anxiety and memory function. Many of these effects appear to be strain specific, suggesting a potential role of certain probiotic strains as a novel adjuvant strategy for neurologic disorders. An imbalance in bacteria and microbiome can have serious consequences when it comes to gastrointestinal health and mental health. In fact, researchers have discovered that people with certain digestive disorders have a higher risk of depression and anxiety. So next time you're having your mood swings, you know who to blame. Recent evidences have also indicated that gut microbiota is associated with alcoholic and non-alcoholic liver damage. Gut-derived endotoxin and other luminal bacterial products may be cofactors for the development of alcoholic liver disease and may be important in the pathogenesis of non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, which is liver inflammation and damage caused by a buildup of fat in the liver. A recent hypothesis has also suggested that microbial alterations at gastrointestinal tract level play a key role in the pathogenesis of chronic chronic HIV infection. Autism has been thought to be linked to gastrointestinal symptoms such as diarrhea combined with genetic predisposition and environmental factors. 
the gut brain axis by which gut bacteria communicate with the central nervous system through neural endocrine and immune pathways to influence brain function and behavior has been implicated in the pathogenesis of autism and autism spectrum disorders in 2019 the food and drug administration recognized microbial transplant therapy and labeled it fast track for autism spectrum disorders treatment after observing that successful clinical trials using long term microbial transplant therapy on autistic children allergies asthma and other autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis are the result of an imbalance in the immune system that causes the body to react too strongly to a stimulus Since an estimated 80% of your immune system is located in your gut, digestive health is essential to supporting the immune system and avoiding allergy symptoms. In fact, new research links the presence of beneficial bacteria in the gut with reduced incidence of allergies. It is assumed that the intestinal bacteria promote the uremic syndrome, but the production of uremic toxins and may be involved in chronic kidney disease. It's almost as if the gut bacteria is influencing every aspect of your health and well-being. So is there anything we can do to improve it? The answer is yes. Here are 10 things that you can do to improve the gut bacteria. Number 1, add prebiotic rich foods to every meal. Prebiotics are substances that selectively feed our healthy gut associated microbes. Prebiotics are naturally present in many plant-based foods. This includes certain fruits, vegetables, beans and whole grains. Apples, bananas, barley, oats, almonds, chia and flax seeds, garlic, onion, beans, legumes, green and black teas and even cocoa. are rich in prebiotics make sure that your diet contains enough fiber as fiber rich foods are prebiotics consume less of refined carbohydrates like refined flour white bread white pasta and white rice and sugar diet rich in carbohydrates can harm the good bacteria number 2 have fermented foods Fermented foods are those produced or transformed with the help of microorganisms such as bacteria and yeast. Fermented foods act as a natural probiotic supplement, populating the gut with beneficial microbes when we consume them. Consuming a diet high in fermented foods increases the diversity of microbes in the gut and lowers the markers of inflammation. Try to include foods such as yogurt, kefir, kombucha, miso, tempeh, sauerkraut, and kimchi in your diet. Number three. Include a wide variety of plants in your diet. One of the best ways to increase the diversity of your gut microbiome is to eat a wide variety of whole plant foods. Researchers have found that those who eat greater than or equal to 30 plant varieties per week have a more diverse gut microbiome compared to those who eat less than or equal to 10 plant varieties per week. Cooking with fresh herbs and adding them to salads, starting your day with a plant-filled smoothie. Snacking on a fruit with nuts and seeds and incorporating plant-based proteins in your meals such as beans and legumes are all tasty ways to promote a diverse gut microbiome. Number 4, avoid artificial sweeteners. If you use saccharin, sucralose, aspartame, acesulfam, potassium, neotame and advantame on ingredient labels on fruits, beverages and supplements, you will be doing your gut bacteria some good by avoiding it. Artificial sweeteners may appear healthier than regular sugar since they are calorie free but some research indicates that they may actually wreak havoc in our healthy gut bacteria a cross section study published in the journal of obesity in october 2019 found that in those with morbid obesity artificial sweetener intake was positively correlated with gut microbiome changes linked to insulin resistance one of the main contributors to pathogenesis of type 2 diabetes rather than regularly consuming artificial sweetness it's healthier to consume real sugar in moderation number 5 avoid dietary emulsifiers dietary emulsifiers are food additives that improve the texture and consistency of various processed foods by holding food particles together they are added to foods like salad dressings to prevent separation of oil and water and ice cream and gelatin desserts to improve their texture and mouth feel Emulsifiers are added to milk alternatives to prevent their components from separating out. Maltodextrin, carrageenan, polysorbate 80 and carboxymethylcellulose are examples of common chemically processed dietary emulsifiers to look out for. It is speculated that unlike foods with natural emulsification properties, chemically processed emulsifiers may have detrimental effect on our gut microbiota and as a result promote intestinal inflammation. According to a prospective study published in the British Medical 
journal in July 2091, higher intakes of ultra-processed foods are significantly associated with increased risk for inflammatory bowel disease. The study authors theorized that ultra-processed foods often contain chemically processed emulsifiers, and while the effects of these emulsifiers on the human gut microbiome require further research, they postulated that they may be detrimental. Number 6. A little red wine might help. Moderate red wine consumption has been shown to somewhat improve helpful gut bacteria populations due to the fact that it contains polyphenols, a type of plant compound that gets broken down or eaten by gut bacteria and expand beneficial gut bacteria. Number 7. Get some good sleep. A lack of sleep is linked to a reduction in the healthy microbes in your gut. A study published in the European Journal of Nutrition by researchers from King's College London and Zoo, the personalized nutrition company, has found multiple associations between the shift in your internal body clock when your sleeping patterns change and gut microbiome composition. Even a 90-minute difference in midpoint of sleep has been found to encourage a microbiota species that have unfavorable associations with your health. Lack of sleep can also induce stress, affect dietary choices, and affect sleep hormone melatonin, all of which can affect gut health, gastrointestinal mobility, and gut bacteria. Number 8. Have regular exercise. Research also shows that exercise benefits the gut by helping to increase the number of different types of bacteria. Exercise appears to be an environmental factor that can determine changes in the qualitative and quantitative gut microbial composition with possible benefits for the host. Exercise is able to enrich the microflora diversity which could potentially contribute to reducing weight, obesity-associated pathologies and gastrointestinal disorders and protect against colon cancer. Number 9. Probiotic supplements. Use of probiotic supplements are generally considered safe, but may be controversial as some studies have shown that probiotic supplements may in fact harm the microbiome. We believe that probiotic supplements should not be recommended unless you have traveler's diarrhea, ulcerative colitis, or necrotizing enterocolitis. Talk to your health professional before taking probiotic supplements. Number 10. Be cautious with the use of antibiotics. Broad spectrum antibiotics reduce gut microbiota diversity and as well as killing the pathogen of concern can eradicate beneficial microbes with deleterious consequences for the host. Be judicious with the use of antibiotics and it should only be used when prescribed by a health professional. A study in 2022 concluded that current use of antibiotics requires careful stewardship with an emphasis on the application of antibiotic alternative while limiting collateral damage. To this end, we need to design, develop and translate new antibiotic alternatives. Within the scope of a short video, we have tried to include as much information as possible, but by no means has the information given here exhausted the subject. A lot of research is going on and we would like to come back to you later with new insights. Thanks for watching.